Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In this video, I am going to reveal a technique through which you can make a logic circuit of any clock frequency divider. I make you assure that after knowing this step by step approach or method, you will be able to make circuit of any clock frequency divider in less than one minute. A clock frequency divider is a circuit which takes a signal at its input of frequency f and gives an output signal of frequency f by n, where n is an integer number. Now let us see how this unique and useful technique works. Friends, I have divided this video into two parts. In the first part of the video, we will learn about clock frequency dividers to generate a signal of frequency f by n, where n is an odd integer number. In the second part of the video, we will learn about clock frequency dividers to generate a signal of frequency f by n, where n is an integer number. Moreover, I am also planning to prepare a separate video on clock frequency dividers to generate a signal of frequency f by n, where n will be a decimal number, for example, uh, 1.5, 3.5, etc. Friends, let us start with the first part of the video, wherein we will learn about the logic circuit diagram of frequency divider to generate an output signal of frequency f by n, where n is an odd number. Let us consider the easiest case. Let us take n is equal to 3. So we have to design a frequency divider. The input to this frequency divider will be a signal of frequency f and it will generate an output signal of frequency f by 3. As the frequency is divided by 3, uh, so the time period of the output signal will be thrice the time period of the input signal. As we know, frequency is inversely proportional to the time period. And our expected waveform will be, if this is the input signal, then the output signal uh, will have the time period which will be equal to 3 clock cycle of the input signal. In the process of designing clock frequency divider circuit, in the very first step we need a modern counter. In this case, because we are going to divide our clock frequency by number 3, so we need mod 3 counter. As per the definition of mod n counter, it will have n stages. For example, if n is equal to 3, this counter will have 3 stages. It will count from 0 to 2 and stages will be 0, 1 and 2. And obviously for its implementation, it will require two flip-flops. One with output q1 and another with output q0. Friends, in this video, we are not going to focus on the design of mod n counter. We are going to use mod n counter as a block. But still, I am going to create a separate video on design of mod n counter. Its link will appear on the top right corner of the video. But for the time being, let us assume that we already have a design of mod n counter. And we are going to use it. Now let us give bit attention to the timing waveform. So if this is a clock signal that I have applied to mod n counter, and I am displaying the output Q1 only. If we give bit attention to Q1, it is already a frequency signal of frequency f by 3, which is our requirement, but its duty cycle is not 50%. So now you would have understand the reason of taking mod n counter, because mod n counter will have its MSB bit, which will be always a frequency divided by n. Similarly, mod 3 counter will have its MSB bit Q1, which will be exactly a signal of frequency f by 3. We simply need to alter its duty cycle to achieve our desired result, that is a signal of frequency f by 3 with duty cycle of 50%. Friends, please note down, this is our second step. After getting this signal of frequency f by n, f by 3 in this case, we need to alter its duty cycle. In the next part of the video, I am going to tell you how to alter its duty cycle. As signal Q1 remains 0 for 2 uh, clock cycles, 
and it remains one for only one cycle. As it is also clear from its uh, truth table, Q1 remains 0 for 2 cycles and it remains 1 for only 1 cycle. And this sequence repeats. But we want a signal with 50% duty cycle. That means the signal should remain 0 for 1.5 clock cycle and it should remain 1 for 1.5 clock cycle. Just like this signal, it has a frequency f by 3 and duty cycle is 50%. And you see, it remains high for one and a half clock cycle and it remains zero for one and a half clock cycle, as expected. If somehow we can delay our signal Q1 by half cycle, let us say this is signal Q2, and simply ordering Q1 with Q2 will yield our desired result. Now a signal Q1 can be delayed by half cycle by just putting a deep flip flop which works at negative edge of the clock. It will delay a signal Q1 by half cycle and it will produce Q2. We simply need to or Q1 with Q2 and we will get our expected output. Friends, let me generalize the method of duty cycle alteration of the signal Q1 here. As it is quite clear from the truth table that output remains zero for two clock cycles and it remains high for only one clock cycle. But our expectation is zero should remain for one and a half clock cycle and one should remain for one and a half clock cycle. So there is a need uh, to change the output for only half clock cycle. We simply need to put a negative edge trigger D flip flop along with the OR gate and this structure will yield uh, our expected output. Let us see how to design a clock frequency divider for f by 5 and duty cycle 50%. As I already stated earlier, we need to include a mod and counter. In this case, n is 5, so we need to include mod 5 counter in our design. Mod 5 counter counts from 0 to 4, and this is its state table. Now, as stated earlier, let us give a close look to its MSB bit. This is also a signal of frequency f by 5, but its duty cycle is not 50%. It remains 0 for 4 clock cycles and remains high for only 1 clock cycle. But our expectation is 50% duty cycle. So we are expecting a signal that should remain 0 for 2 and half clock cycle and that should also remain high for 2 and half clock cycle. So we need to alter uh, our signal Q2 for one and a half clock cycle. To do so, we need to include two flip flops, one working at positive edge of the clock and another working at negative edge of the clock. The one which works at the positive edge of the clock will alter our output by one clock cycle. And the one which works at negative edge of the clock will alter our output by half clock cycle, as we saw in case of frequency divided by three. We simply need to OR all the outputs as shown in a figure and it will yield the desired output that is frequency f by 5 with 50% duty cycle. Friends, let me tell you the more optimized solution for implementation of frequency divider for f by 5 and duty cycle 50%. Instead of giving attention to the MSV bit Q2, let us take our attention to Q1. This is also a signal of frequency f by 5. It remains 0 for 3 clock cycles and remains high for only 2 clock cycles. And our expectation is our output signal should remain 0 for 2 and half clock cycles and it should remain high for 2 and half clock cycle. Only half clock cycle alteration is required for Q1 unlike 1 and half clock cycle alteration for signal Q2. So let us take the output Q1 of mod and counter and give it to the negative edge triggered flip-flop. As we know, negative edge triggered flip-flop can help us to alter the output Q1 by half clock cycle with the help of this OR gate. This implementation will save one uh, D flip-flop as compared to the implementation where we choose Q2 for alteration. Friends, let us conclude and generalize the method of implementation of f by n frequency divider.
the very first point is we need to include mod and counter and the second point is after the output of mod and counter if we include positive as triggered along with the or gate it can help us to alter the output by one clock cycle if we include negative as triggered flip flop it can help us to alter the output by half clock cycle now the very important point is we need to wisely choose one of the output of modern counter having frequency f by n and where less alteration is required it can help us to implement a hardware with better optimization friends let us design a frequency divider for frequency f by 7 and duty cycle 50% in an optimized way as the first norm we need to have a modern counter where n is 7 so we need to include mod 7 counters mod 7 counter counts from 0 to 6 this is its uh, state table now let us take our attention to the most significant bit q2 uh, it is a signal having frequency f by 7 only but its duty cycle is not 50% it remains 0 for 4 clock cycles and it remains uh, high for only 3 clock cycles but as per the expectation we need a signal having frequency f by 7 and duty cycle 50% so that means we need a signal which should remain zero for 3.5 cycles and which should be high for 3.5 cycles that means we need only an alteration of half clock cycle for q2 now let us take a look at q1 also q1 is not a signal having frequency f by 7 so we cannot use it so q2 is our only option so we simply need to put a negative as trigger flip flop along with or gate to e lever required output friends similarly we can design the frequency dividers for frequency f by 9 f by 11 and so on with duty cycle 50% with optimized and non optimized hardware now let us see few examples of clock frequency divider design for frequency f by n where n is an even number and let us consider the easiest case where n is equal to 2 in this case the input clock signal uh, will have the frequency f and its output will have the frequency f by 2 the time period of the output signal will be twice the time period of the input signal as frequency is inversely proportion to the time period and expected waveform if this is a input signal having time period t in and this will be our expected output signal having frequency f by 2 and time period twice the time period of the input signal so for the two cycles of this input signal we have one uh, clock period of the output signal now let us see how to design it as i already mentioned to design a clock frequency divider for frequency f by n we need to have mod n counter in this case n is equal to 2 so we need to take mod 2 counter and mod 2 counter will count from 0 to 1 so that means it only requires one flip flop and let us assume that its output is q0 it will count from 0 to 1 as we know q0 is here msb bit only and it is always a frequency equal to f by 2 its duty cycle is also 50% so there is no need of any alteration q0 is our expected signal that is a signal of frequency f by 2 and its time period is twice the time period of the input signal now let us consider another example to design a clock frequency divider to generate a clock signal of frequency f by 4 as i already mentioned as a first norm because we want to generate a clock frequency divider for frequency f by 4 so we have to include mod 4 counter mod 4 counter counts from 0 to 3 so obviously it will require two flip flops for its implementation and this will be stood table it will count from 0 to 3 now let us take our attention to the msb bit q1 as i already illustrated in many examples this will be a signal of frequency f by 4 i don't think there is more explanation required and now as we also know it is remaining zero for two cycles and it is a uh, logical high for two clock cycles so its duty cycle is also 50% and there is no alteration required so q1 is our expected output which is a signal of frequency f by 
and its time period is four times the time period of the input signal. Friends, now I'm going to consider the last example of this episode to design a clock frequency divider for a frequency f by 6. As per the first norm, we need to include mod 6 counter, which will count from 0 to 5. And this is its truth table. It will require three flip-flops for its implementation. And now let us take our attention to the MSV bit Q2. It is a signal of frequency f by 6, but its duty cycle is not 50%, as it remains 0 for 4 clock cycles and remains high for only 2 clock cycles. But our expected signal is, which should remain 0 for 3 clock cycles and which should remain high for 3 clock cycles. That means there is a need to alter Q2 by 1 clock cycle. As I stated earlier and we concluded this also, that if we want to alter a signal by 1 clock cycle, we need to put one posterior trigger flip-flop along with an OR gate. It will yield our required signal of frequency f by 6. So this is what I am talking about. This is output Q2. If we put one posterior trigger flip-flop, it will yield a signal Q3. Both the signals Q2 and Q3 will go to an OR gate, which will yield our required signal of frequency f by 6. Now let us see its timing waveform. This is the input uh, signal of frequency f having time period t in which is going as an input over mod 6 counter. And this is q2 which is the signal of frequency f by 6 but its duty cycle is not 50%. And after putting one d flip flop which is operating at positive edge of the clock it will yield and signal q3. This is the q3 which is delayed by one clock cycle. If we do an OR operation on signal Q2 and Q3, it will yield our expected signal having frequency f by 6 and duty cycle 50%. Friends, let me once again conclude all the points to design a frequency divider of frequency f by n. The very first norm is we need to include mod n counter as we illustrated many examples. A posterior ticker flip-flop along with one OR gate is used to alter the output of mod n counter by one clock cycle. Negative trigger flip flop along with an OR gate is used to uh, alter the output of mod n counter by half clock cycle. And the very important thing is we need to choose one of the output of mod n counter having frequency f by n where very less alteration is required for hardware optimization. Friends, with this I am going to end this episode and in future we are going to create many similar type of videos. If you like my video, please press the like button and share it with your friends and colleagues. And to have the notification of similar videos, do not forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you so much.